What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Unsolicited with Sam and Jordan. I am Sam. This is Jordan. And Jordan, usually at this at this point is when I ask you, how are you doing? How was your day? I need you to tell me about this freaking dumpster thing that's happening at your apartment. What and also, how are you? <laughs> what a way to kick off the show. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great. I am. Um, but for those curious about Sam's inquiry <laughs> and the dumpster situation. So I live in an apartment complex with like a bunch of different sizes. And there are a lot of families in my apartment complex and a lot of kids that look like, like no older than middle school, but like mainly elementary middle school vibes. And there's a bunch of kids and they always play in this, like, it's like every kid plays together in this one giant group. And it's so cute, like adorable boys, girls, like everyone hangs out and I see them all the time. And I'm like, this is so adorable. Also my complex. So it's apartments in the back. And then the first half is like those large townhomes, like four families. So a bunch of kids today, I get a text message <laughs> from my apartment complex, essentially saying that the kids have been like jumping in and on <laughs> dumpsters in our apartment complex. And when I tell you, I get skeeved out just taking my trash to said dumpsters and throwing them over, the thought of these children jumping all up in them, I wanna choke. Um, so but funny. yeah, my apartment complex sent like the pettiest, they don't mess around with their <laughs> announcements. They are petty. Um, here's the, here's the message I got. It was observed this afternoon that children from both communities were playing in and on the dumpsters. This is a very dangerous situation and absolutely cannot continue. The dumpsters that the communities, wait, the dumpsters at the communities can be dangerous to play on and is at most not sanitary. <laughs> like, it's like, if like, anything. Yeah. Um, I ask again that all children are cautioned about the dumpsters and are reminded <laughs> that this is not an amenity or a playground. <laughs> it's not an amenity. They are petty. I like them. They go, I crack up every time. Because we're also, um, my apartment complex is technically no gardening, no smoking really of any kind. Gotcha. Um, so when people are smoking... Mm -hmm. or doing anything um the messages for that are just as petty and just as fun i'm sure I'm i sure. love it well that's hilarious i saw that about an hour ago yep. and i was like jordan I i'm gonna need some more context here you know I'm like, like, what's going on? we you know how we talked about the sephora teeny boppers apparently yeah. elementary schoolers in my apartment complex it's an epidemic of jumping in dumpsters that's I in large capacities, a bunch of children just deciding they want to jump in a dumpster. I, and and you saying that you just bringing your trash to the dumpster is like skeevy as it is. Like uh, when I was in college and I lived in an apartment complex, I would dread walking yes. out there to throw my garbage away. I was like, uh, like I would like ration with my roommates. I'd be like, if you do it, I will like clean the dishes for a week. Like I don't want, Yes. I, I don't have, want to do it. And like, just, just being inside of a dumpster in and of itself, like, why? 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 I have two trash bags and a box out right now. Um, Cause Brian wasn't here yesterday. I do not like going anymore. And also one of the dumpsters, I don't know which one they were playing in. There's a couple. Um, but the one nearest me has like, sometimes the gates are open, but sometimes they're closed. And if I have something really heavy and I can't chuck it over, I have to walk through like this little narrow <laughs> where like everyone who's like had things drip or fall out of the bat. It's like all that. And I'm just like, these are fucking disgusting. Okay. And to think that these children are all up in there. They're going to get like hepatitis or something. Right. Like, Something's going to go wrong. Or, right. oh, I, I don't know. Did you hear about the story of the woman who was sleeping in a dumpster and then got dumped into the garbage truck and lived? Oh, my God. You didn't hear about this? No. I saw it on TikTok. 
That's horrifying. There was like a family filming it from their window and they were like, what is going on? Like they had no idea. And was then it a I, I, I would assume. Or was I it like know. a drunk girl that like fell into a dumpster? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just assumed a homeless woman. But or like. Was it like a body that got dumped and then wasn't dead? No, apparently she lived. Oh, oh, I see what no. you're saying. I see what yeah. you're saying. As I'm coming off of listening to a true crime podcast as I came home from the chiropractor, which I should say to divert real quick. Yes. I started going to the chiropractor, but Dr. Joe is saving my life right now. No way. Oh my God. The guy, like, he cracks my back, he cracks my neck, he gives me like a nice little, like, he uses, like, you know, like Bengay, like the Icy Hot. Mm-hmm. He uses like a CBD Icy Hot. And like, cause like the back of my, the back of my to to if you guys are interested in my health issues um Please. my back was like going numb because i think i had like a pinched nerve or something so i was like this is an issue and like obviously i work on a computer on a day all day and like on a phone and i'm like hunched over all the time um but this man is like he's just like and then he'd be like all right you know breathe out and he'd go and like my back just like fucking it's crazy i've never been to a chiropractor before my mom's been going forever and I started going to Dr. Joe and he's been saving my life. So No, I've never been either. But also ha- speaking of the neck thing, have you heard about tech neck? Mm. I've heard like things about it, but never like read up on it. Apparently, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. It's okay. Apparently one of my coworkers, not apparently, one of my coworkers <laughs> went to um her chiropractor and got like scans and x-rays done and everything um because he said she was like extremely stiff and he showed her her x-ray and her neck is like a straight line when there's like supposed to be a curve and that's literally from holding your head down or looking at a phone and they're calling it tech neck and they're saying that like the up and coming generations their necks are going to get fucking stuck like that god we're gonna be like the generation that like changes freaking all of humanity oh my god we are like the monkeys yeah that's what i'm saying like we're gonna lose our pinky toes and have tech neck yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have four toes and straight necks <laughs> can you imagine if everyone's walked around in the next like hundred years it's just like no. i mean I, like this man is a you know he's a professional chiropractor so it's like obviously it's his job but like the second i walked in he was like you work at a desk and i was like mm-hmm, how do you know and he was yeah. like just your posture and i'm like oh, oh. looking away <laughs> how could you possibly know that <laughs> how do you know i work in social media <laughs> no i know and then he asked me what i did and i was like i work at a desk yeah and I'm, like, and I'm like hunched over a phone all the time and he's just like yeah i can tell and i'm like you know, i've started cool. seeing like lights when i close my eyes um and i oh, think that's that, not good Jordan. yeah no i think that's from like two screens phone oh screen light, God. like <laughs> so maybe we're gonna have straight necks and be blind blind straight necks four toes that's yep. that's the evolutionary process that we're starting our like great 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 grandchildren someday but, are gonna be they, like freaking yeah. grandma <laughs> I got too obsessed with TikTok. Um, I was going to make a joke and I completely forgot it. Oh, oh. And then, you know, um, Apple's going to invent something for the, you know, have you seen the goggles? I saw people on Radio Row in Vegas walking around with them. No, people are trying. I am not ready. And maybe I sound like. My parents did when AIM came out, but sure. I am not ready for this. This feels like when we were in elementary school, like drawing pictures of the future, like way down the road, like that is shit I pictured and it crosses a line for me. No, it's, it's horrifying to see. And like, I've seen TikToks too of people walking around with them on and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. First of all, like, is it, is it? I don't even really know what it is. Is it just like reality through a different lens? I, I, cause I think it can be like reality through a different lens. You can have like your, like a computer screen up, like your phone screen. Like I saw in the ad, like, why? Yes. Oh, I know. This is, we are entering Black Mirror. It's, 
were were there i'm pretty sure there was a black mirror episode about this probably but in the ad for it that i saw initially um it was some guy was like on the subway with them on and like moving his hand as if it was a mouse and like working wait on the subway yes wait i think i saw that too yes and like he was like yes and i'm like are you like and you think the thing is you take that thing off you're a crazy person yep you're a crazy person no yeah no when i saw the commercial for it i was over at brian's and me and his brother just like looked at each other and we're like fuck no (laughs) i hate that absolutely not i remember being in like elementary school did you guys have smart boards Yes. Oh my God. See, that felt like the future. Yeah. It was was just a projector. Like that's all it was. It was a projector of your computer screen. And a Bluetooth thing. Marker. Yeah. Remote marker thing. Yeah. Like, and like, I remember being like, oh, please pick me. I want to draw on the smart board. Like, and it was just a blank word document up on the board that you got to do two plus two equals four. Well, to be fair, I was do- uh, smart boards for me didn't come around until like seventh or eighth grade. Like I was, I had the things that you put like that clear piece of paper on that they wrote the notes on and it would project yes. up onto the no, wall. No, I had that too. Like that's like a very old thing now. Yeah. No. And I, my teacher that was using it, by the time I even got to her, smart boards were, I think I was in eighth grade, but yeah. she was just old school and she was like, I'm not switching up. So. No. Shout out to Squiggly. There were so many teachers that were like rejecting smart boards. And like, because I know my teachers, like, I have so many memories of teachers. Like, remember how it had like the calibrator thing in the corner? Yes. I'm unlocking core memories for you right now. I see you like crossed it with the, yes. Yes. And I remember all of them would be like, oh, oh," like, and it would never calibrate. Like, you would draw all over here and the line would show up over there. I remember when my math teacher in high school hated calibrating and him and I had a very interesting rapport with one another. I didn't call him Mr. Caputo. I called him John just to piss him off. I was like a horrible student. Which I did not believe. Literally, I was especially, well, it depended on the class, but especially in that class, I was very good at math in high school. So like, I really like, once you showed me how to do it, it like unlocked my brain. I was like, you don't need to show me anything else. Like I know how to do it. So I had like a 95 average in college calculus. Like, I don't know where it happened because I went to college and it was like gone, (laughs) but I would talk to to my teacher and he was just like, can you calibrate the board for me? And I was like, you got it, John. I will always calibrate the board for you. (laughs) But I feel like you were one of those students where, like, you felt like a rebel, but you were their favorite. Oh, 100%. 100%. One time he put a, a paper down on, like, my desk. Like, we were getting tests back, and it was, like, a 92, like, a perfectly fine grade. And he was yeah. like, what happened? And I was like, are you fucking serious? And then my friend Kat, I talk about her all the time now, but Jordan knows Kat. And I... Yeah. And we love Kat. Um, and she and I are very, very... We she, Her last name's Kavanaugh. So Cardona Kavanaugh. We were always next to each other in like every class and like before they switched it up. This man would put us on opposite sides of the room so that we stopped talking. And I would stand up and I'd be like, Catherine! Catherine! And he'd be like, Sam, sit down. You're disrupting class. And I was like, no, I need to tell her something. And he's like, oh my God, you're a crazy person. See, it's so funny because I could not possibly have been the more opposite student from you at least later on in life because i got i had like a cb average like okay. just like run of the mill like didn't do my homework didn't tur- this is in college or this is in high school and it's earlier um college completely different person I but we've talked about this on the podcast before we i feel like we definitely have we're yes. repeating story we're on episode 36 guys yeah. we don't know what we've said before um but yeah no and I was so like I wasn't a good student like on paper however I was teacher's pet like every teacher loved me like I was just like I don't know I'm I'm a thank you I'm just like a goody two-shoes so like even if I knew like I was like when I would turn in my homework and it wasn't done I'd be so ashamed and yet I didn't have the motivation to like 
do it anyway. <laughs> like, and I remember my one teacher like called me in and she was like, you know, you're better than a C. Like you can, do she's like, if you just had a little more effort. And I was like, but I don't, I was like, I just don't care. And, and then I went to college. college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three bachelor's degrees, a 4.0 later. <laughs> hey, look what happens when you apply yourself. Right. That's and I right. also, that's why I always think it's so crazy that kids have to like pick their life at 18, essentially, because like high school, I just didn't give a shit about what we learned. Like I was like, what? I don't care about this. And then I got to college and I was taking like intro to film, even my English and math classes. For some reason, I enjoyed them more. Yeah. Um, maybe it was even just like the balance of life. But I'm telling you, once I got to college, it was a light switch. Yeah. Well, it's also just like the way you're also treated in college, right? Like in high school, you are a student and all you do is you come in, you sit down, you listen, mm -hmm. you do your work, you leave. In college, it's a lot more like back and forth. Like professors are more chill and they're just like, so what do you guys want to talk about today? Yeah. And like, you know, it's a little bit more like personable, especially in like the smaller type of classes and things like that. Because I know, like, I would, I was a communications major. I had to take all these theory classes, and I was like, this is such, so fucking stupid. Like, I hate this. But my teachers were just like, all right, let's, let's take this and make it a little bit more fun. And they'd like, do things to like actually enhance your learning as opposed to just being like, do your homework, do this, do that, blah, 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 blah. So, see, we, I loved the communication theories classes. Like, I, yeah. it's so crazy that you say that because two weeks ago, I was thinking of my, professor from my freshman year of college who had my first communications class ever where he was showing like, oh, it's this law. So if people do this and then because you did that and then, and I was like, I love this. And I literally was like, I want to go to the, the community college and take more communications classes. Are you serious? I was like, literally like, kill me, please. I loved it. I thought it was so crazy. And now that like I'm in marketing, like I'm like, oh my God, I need you. Like, How do I get through to people? The only thing that I remember from like my communications theory classes is semiotics and which was like the study of signs, which yeah. was basically like they'd hold up a stop sign and they'd be like, what does this sign mean? And I'd be like, fucking stop. And like, <laughs> they were like, perfect. A pass. And I was like, cool. I know I did feel but like looking at my sister's college who's in like chemistry to anatomy and advanced anatomy and physiology. Right. For she's becoming a nurse, she needs to know everything of the human body. She needs to know what every single medication will do to every single kind of person. And then I'm like, oh my god! And I was editing like a short film. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah no, that was my my college different. roommate. My college roommate Amber was a chemistry forensic chemistry major, and she was taking like the orgo, like the organic chemistry and everything. She would show me some of the stuff and I'd be like, Amber, please. I have movies to watch for, for class. I need you to be quiet. <laughs> My homework was literally watch this TV show and tell me about it. And then Spencer's like dissecting a pig. She literally had to bring a pig into our garage and dissect it at home. Was this during COVID? No, or but it, she was taking the class online over the summer oh still God. had to do all the labs and i had to film her and she was in goggles and <laughs> we're in, in our garage and i'm standing there filming spencer hey at least you used your i was gonna say i was gonna say my communications degree did come in handy because i had to actually edit the video for her because she didn't know how to there you go there you go well i love that Yes. And I love the fact that we had the very similar college experience in yes. that way because I was one, I think one class away from being a film minor, didn't even want to be a film minor, but they literally told me, they were like, you just need to do one more class. And I was like, I can't fit it. Like, I'm going to graduate. I'm not going to stay one more semester for three credits. And they were like, okay, well, you were almost a film minor. And I was like, that's how many movie classes I took. I love movie classes. They were so good. That was the first time I ever saw a Wes Anderson movie. Literally was for a class. Yeah. And I was like, it like changed my, he's now my favorite director. Like, mm -hmm. I loved the film. And I saw so many underrated movies that like I never would have watched yeah. on my own. I loved them. I watched like a lot of like old movies, like Humphrey Bogart movies and yeah. Marlon Brando and like things like that. And I loved it. And then they'd just be like, here's a test on the movie. And I'd be okay. like, I remember what happens. And it was the, wonderful. 
Yes. The worst project that I had, though, was watching the first episode of Westworld. I think that's what it was called. With the robots? Oh, Westworld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had to watch the first episode of Westworld, and I had to watch one episode of Black Mirror. And I had to keep track of every single shot. So every time the camera moved, I had to describe what the shot was. Sam, this Death. took me, I want to say, five hours. Like, I, I didn't finish it in one day. Like, I was like, oh, I'll just sit down and do it. And then I realized how hard it was going to be. They're like long ass complex TV shows, like production. Especially Westworld, like Westworld's yeah, like a yeah. freaking insane show. And you know what? I resented that assignment so much. I actually never watched Westworld because that was the. It, I had to do the first episode, and I was so sick of it. I was like, I fucking hate this TV show. <laughs> never gonna watch it ever again. Yes. I never watched Westworld. Yeah. My Michael and my mom watched Westworld, but I never did. But also it's like I don't know, it's like robots and rich people and yeah. AI shit. I don't I don't know. It was very confusing, but you know, that's what that's what it was like. <sighs> Look where we are today. Look where we are today. Talking no, shit. Talking shit on yeah. our film, almost film. Majors, <laughs> minors. Amazing. Well, actually, I want to talk about um the Eras Tour because we're back on the, our Eras Tour bullshit. Before we do, real quick, have you seen Harry Styles' new haircut? Yes. I literally it gives me the ick. As somebody who loves Harry Styles, it's not good, right? Like it's not just me. No, he he kind of he kind of looks like an old man now. Yes, it aged him. Like, yes. Significantly. Like, a lot. Like, he looks, not even saying he's old. He just looks way older than he is. Like. Yeah. He just turned 30. Like, yeah. this month. Yeah, no. And I, I don't like it. Um, But I did hear a rumor, like, two years ago that I thought was insane at the time. And now I'm like. Was it the hair plugs? Yes. <laughs> that he has fake hair. I love that rumor. <laughs> Is it real? I don't know. <laughs> because now, like, with the haircut and I look at his hairline, I'm the like... The hairline is receding. It's essentially gone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually left already. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I saw that picture of him. And it's like, if he's got just, like, the front, like, going on. Like, it's, like, a little bit longer in the front. And then it's, like, shaved on the sides. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You used to have the most gorgeous luscious hair that would send me into a spiral if you just like put your hand in it and i'm like what now am i like are we are we getting that much older that much faster if if it was hair plugs before just put it back in <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know can you remove hair plugs I don't, I don't know. Think I that's something heard, you can remove. I actually heard. I didn't hear hair plugs. I knew it was fake hair, but I think I heard toupee. Oh, toupee. Yes. Oh. Which that? that yeah, that's just like glue. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there before we started in our topic yeah. for the day. <laughs> no, I'm not loving it. No, it's a. Uh, it's I prefer a buzz cut. I don't know if that's a hot take, but. I feel like he did have a bit of a buzz cut for a little while, but he wasn't, like, very much in the public eye. No, I saw, like, three pictures, and I was like, the buzz cut is it. This must be it growing back after the buzz cut. So maybe, maybe it's just in that awkward in-between. Maybe that awkward length. We all know a good awkward length. Yeah, no. So I'm going to I'm gonna put it to that, and then before we know it. Um, it's long again. I love his long hair. I know. I just, I just love long hair, but that's I just me. I do too. Are you ready to talk about Taylor Swift? Always. <laughs> um. Obviously, Melbourne, Australia, is the favorite child. Yeah. Um, the amount of songs that we got in the surprise song set list over this past weekend was bananas. I wrote them down. Starting off strong, they had she started with red. Okay, cool. Then she did You're Losing Me on the piano. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
perfect. Yeah, First yeah. we saw, phenomenal. First time she's ever saying it live. Um, stunning, beautiful, hot start. Then the next day, didn't know mashups were allowed. She didn't put that in the rule book. Getaway car, August, other side of the door. We talked about this one. Yeah. I, I, I was like, other side of the door with getaway car? And like, it just, I, I was I was speechless. I was very upset. And she paired that with, this is me trying. Sadder version. S- <laughs> literally, literally sadder. Ver- and you're just like, oh my God, Taylor, please spare us. No, we're it's gonna- like she's ruining my day before I even wake up because I wake up and I check my phone. It's the first thing I see. And I'm like, yeah. she shot me. You no, know, it, it's I'm I'm very upset. And then for me personally, this one cut real deep with Come Back Be Here and Daylight Mashup because and she paired that with teardrops on my guitar. Yep. This hurt me so hard because Obviously, as many people know, Michael and I have been together for a long time, which means for the four years we were in college, we had a long distance relationship. Come Back Be Here was like something I listened to to like cry myself to sleep at night when I missed him a lot. Mm-hmm. Daylight is going to be incorporated into my wedding in one way or another. I won't share quite yet, but Daylight is a big part of my wedding. So the fact that she put Daylight and Come Back Be Here together had me in shambles. No, I don't blame you. And don't hate me for saying this. Come Back Be Here was actually my surprise song. Yes. One of my surprise songs, Night One. I remember. But it's so funny that you say that because I also listened to Come Back Be Here with Brian when we were first, like our first baseball season where we were actually together. Yeah. Um, and then I always say like my playlist for him, the first song is Daylight. Oh. Daylight is such a good song. It is. It is such a good song. So beautiful. So beautiful. But you know, she's been, I swear, uh, she either owes Australia money and they said, give us everything or else. And so (laughs) she was like, sure. Um, Or someone broke into her gorgeous hotel room and and threatened her in some way. Because what the hell? And then she goes to say, she's like, ha ha ha. By the way, no more rules. I can repeat. I can do whatever the fuck I want. She's singing August. August is on the set list. They That's already what... heard August. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, what are we surprise song in August when August is? You just you, you just, just sing. You're just you're just sing August. Uh, she's also saying you're on your own, kid. Again. I know she keeps singing it, and I'm just like, ma'am. And every I'm time I cry, cry, every time I cry, it's just been. Thank God this is on the other side of the world right now because when it was North America, like I was sitting on TikTok finding lives. Oh, yeah. And I'd stay up and watch and, you know, do the whole shebang. But now that it's on the other side of the world, you know, I have to just wake up and find out what, what, what went on because I'm not waking up at whatever um, t- whatever clock in the morning to listen to surprise songs. I condone the people that do do that, though. Yeah, no respect. I Mad wait. respect. Um, but yeah, just, just looking through, it's like, why are we, did she realize like, maybe does she not have enough songs per show that she just started mashing up? Like, did it start from out of the woods and is it over now? Like that was the first mashup she did, right? Yeah. So it's like, did she just figure out like, oh shit, I could just fucking throw a bunch of songs together and it'll fucking kill everybody. I have one theory. And I have okay. no idea if there's any truth to this. Hit me with but it. But I posed the question, what if she's trying to sing as many songs from as many eras as possible so that when the Tortured Poets Department comes out, she just starts singing two songs from the Tortured Poets Department instead of having an acoustic set or like only doing one acoustic song and one from Tortured Poets Department. Like, I don't know, but... I don't think she would. I don't think she would. I think what, which is crazy, because I'm pretty sure Eras is going through 2025. But, like, I feel like she's going to finish Eras and then tour Tortured Poets Department. I don't know. Yeah, I was just going to say, do you think she'll make, because, like, I mean, she just added Long Live to the set, to the yeah. set list. Like, she could do, she could do whatever she wants. We're, we're being quite frank. She could do yeah. whatever she wants. But, like, 
do you think she'd add like two to three tortured poet songs to the set list like permanently and just create a tortured poets era i don't know just because it's already so long i know that's what i'm saying i hope she does a separate tour of just tortured poets because right. i would love to go to yet another type of taylor swift tour which by the way i was trying to get tickets to um an indianapolis show and then um my cousin's husband like sent like a like a post and he was just like somebody's selling their tickets for like face value like not over pricing them and i was like how much are they and he was just like oh i lost the post and i'm like okay that's not funny i was like that's um, not your fault i replied like a couple days later because i didn't see the text but like oh i wish i could have saw that when it actually came in no i'm trying to go to miami i would love to go to miami right right but we'll see i just I'm, we're waiting on robbie's dad who um, got us tickets for the second night in philly i'm praying for you i'm praying for I just, you I, my dad is like so like you're not tired of seeing the same show and i'm like i can't explain it but it was the greatest feeling ever it's so fun it it's was so fun. it felt like girlhood like actually it does. especially it's during the surprise song sets yes like it's very intimate and she's there and she's just kind of chatting with you too. Like, she's just like, I wrote this song when I was 12. And yeah. you're like, oh, I sure you did, Taylor. Like, sing it. And she's sitting there and she'll like even kind of like fuck it up a little. And like, she's just very personable. And like, oh, I wish I could go to another Eras Tour show. I'm praying. But good news, we do get it on streaming with Cardigan plus. <laughs> Four more surprise songs. Did you peek at what the surprise songs are? I did Do not. I well, I, I am just assuming it's every, because they filmed the first three nights of LA. So I'm just assuming they added in the first two nights. Okay. Do you want to know what they are? Or? Sure. Why not? It'll be it's a surprise anyway. Death by a Thousand Cuts. <laughs> are you ready for this? Maroon. Oh Wait, say it again. Maroon. Oh, God. <laughs> you are in love. <laughs> and I can see you. <laughs> so those are the ones that she did <laughs> nights one and two. Aren't they so good? <laughs> They're so good. That's my a thousand cuts. And Maroon? Will we already have your on your own kid and our song? Oh. It's just, it, okay, look at this. This is just us talking about songs. Yeah. There's nothing to do with it. It might not even be true. It might not right, even be yeah. those songs. Yeah, maybe they were. It probably is. You're probably right that they just put in the rest of the LA surprise and song. It would make sense because she wore the red dress three nights in a row, the maroon dress. Oh, she did? Yeah. Like, she kept, huh. for recording, those first three nights, she kept all the outfits the same. That makes sense. Because then yeah. they'll just splice it in. And it won't exactly. look like different days, even though we obviously know it's from different days. Yeah. Just visually. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm going to watch it with my parents when it comes out. Yay! I think we talked about this last week. I think we talked about it after we finished recording. Oh, it was our after podcast podcast. It was our after podcast podcast, which I feel yeah. like one day we'll have to record and put on like a Patreon or something like that. No, me and Sam always, for, for the most part, tonight I have to, we can't have our after podcast podcast, but a lot of the times me and Sam will just stay on after and just like, like I'll cook dinner and we'll just hang out. We'll and I remember last week we talked for like a whole extra hour. I cooked a whole meal. Sam watched it from beginning to end. And Brian yeah. texted me and was like, are you still on your podcast? Because I didn't text him yet. No, the, and, funny thing, the funny thing was that I walked into our bedroom and Michael just, Michael asked me the same thing. He was like, did you just do a two and a half hour podcast? And I was like, no. No. I was Brian like, me and he, I was like, technically. <laughs> technically, <laughs> yes. Because we talked for like 30 minutes before we started. And then yeah. we started and we talked for an hour. Uh, recording and then we, we talked for like another hour after that 
That was even a longer episode, too. I think that ran at, like, 120. Yeah, it was, like, yeah, like, 115-ish. We just so, couldn't have enough of, enough of each other last week. I mean, that's what happens when you don't talk to each other for a week. Right? So. And Jordan and I keep some things to ourselves so that we can tell each other things on the podcast. Yes. As if there we were, was, like, actually on FaceTime. There was one thing that I actually texted you because I didn't want it to go a long time. And I was like, damn, this would be really good podcast content. And I can't even – I don't even remember what it was. Oh, what did you – I don't even know. What would you have told me? I don't know. I told you something. But oh, I don't even remember. Anyway, I don't, I'm going to be honest. Sam sent me a rundown of like topics for today. I only remember one of them. Have we hit was the Aeros Tour one? The Aeros Tour was one of them. Um, the next one, I'll just pop it up on the screen here. It's partially from you uh, sharing the Justin Field story. <laughs> from you um <laughs> yeah we're gonna talk a little bit of nfl offseason stories um and by stories i mean justin fields unfollowing the bears on instagram was it just yeah. instagram or was it everything i think it was all i saw was instagram okay but we this again the pettiness of the nfl offseason is exactly what we wish for yeah every single time and also this is a really big story because bears hold the number one overall pick Bears hold the number one overall pick. I saw also that Justin Fields followed Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, uh, possibly Desmond Ritter. Oh um, if he ends up in Atlanta. That. Honestly, they put him like in like they did like, you know, the superimposed jersey yeah. on top of him. It like, like if someone was just like, this has been Justin Fields the whole time, I'd be like, I've been Mandela affected. Justin Fields has always played for the Falcons. Like it looked like it fit. It and I was like, damn. I think it would, I think you would vibe there. And then I also saw today some, you know, during, before draft time, this is chaotic NFL time where they just start throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Somebody was saying that Daniel Jones should get traded to the Bears and the Bears should give the Giants the number one overall pick. Which honestly, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of, but. Sam! <laughs> <laughs> we have the sixth pick. Like, do we need the number one overall pick? I, I mean, so. if you could get Caleb Williams, Drake Nay. I don't want Caleb Williams. <laughs> like, there are really good quarterbacks. But there are also good quarterbacks to get in, like, a day two. Then I, I don't mind us drafting a quarterback. I have no problem with that. It's just the fact that everybody keeps talking about going up to the first pick. I don't think – I don't like this class. I think that's my problem. Okay. All right. I think – I just think that you love Daniel Jones. I do. And if they the did that, it would be over like that. I and would be sad. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. If Daniel Jones leaves the Giants, I might get a little weepy. And I know a lot of people would be like – Come on. See, like, like, I feel like I would congratulate you for that, but you would be sad. Well, I think it's just the fact that I've stood by him for so long yeah. that I'd like to see it kind of fall apart would be really sad. I mean, I'd understand it'd be for the benefit of the team, but like to lose Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley in the same year, like all of a sudden we're in another rebuild year. And I'm no, like, do we I need that? that? No, I, I, I don't think Saquon's staying. I think he's I think he's heading out. Yeah, I would be surprised. I, if they didn't pay him last year they're not I mean, and they're, they said they're not going to tag him this year so like more likely than not he's going to go yeah. i hope he goes to baltimore that's i was just gonna say i was literally just gonna say the ravens need a running back so bad or i mean the bills still need a running back that would be best case scenario for you for me yes for yes. Saquon, i don't know <laughs> yeah um i was gonna say something but no the eagles were literally in that position after the whole course of went and we picked jalen hurts and like yeah. a, a lot of our vets retired I, re I remember that feeling of like i don't even recognize my team right now like there were so many changes but oh speaking of two uh eagles just <laughs> They oh, just God. completely gave up on Marcus Mariota. They voided, no. his, voided his contract and took a $3 million cap hit, like in dead money, just to be like, go. <laughs> oh, poor Marcus. I mean, he really was awful. And that's coming from someone who like two years ago, I'm pretty sure I said it on a show with you, where I was like, oh, 
Marcus Mariota would be the perfect backup for Jalen Hurts. Like they have a similar playing style. Like I would love this. And then two years later, it finally happened. And yeah. then I saw him in preseason and I was like, what? Yeah. And then I, we saw him a couple times this year and really never not once was I impressed. The funny thing was, is that the end of the show quarterback, Marcus is one of the quarterbacks that they're following. Yes. And he, he dips out of the Falcons and they show this like really like romanticized scene of him on the beach in Hawaii with like his wife and his baby and him getting the call. And he's just like, I'm going to Philly. I'm so excited. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, now he's not in Philly anymore. Oh, now he's nowhere. <laughs> oh, see, but look at that. First round, first round pick. S- sitting in, the, sitting where? Nowhere. Yeah. Just go I mean, to show. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You are right. But also, I'm just salty. It's just my, that's just my Daniel Jones bias. I can't help it. I've Ugh. also seen a lot of rumors of Kirk Cousins to Atlanta because he's also a free agent this year. I don't see that fit, though. Imagine he just goes back to Washington. <laughs> with this division can't handle Kirk Cousins right now. <laughs> we got too much going on over here. Stay in, oh my God. Stay in Minnesota. Stay in Minnesota. I saw a couple people say the Steelers. Wow. But then the Steelers also mentioned that they are not looking for a veteran quarterback and that they're going to work on Kenny. I don't think they should do that. But also, who am I to say? We're talking about Daniel Jones. Who knows? Because also, I feel like, and I talk about this all the time, but I feel like that would be, Kenny got hurt over and over again this year. Why not sign Kirk Cousins to a one-year deal, bench Kenny, train him up? You know, they won't do it for Kenny's confidence because he already was the starter. But yeah. I just don't see Kirk Cousins signing a one-year deal. You think he wants? Yeah. I mean, he deserves it. I would. That he. The thing is that he's just such a regular dude. He wouldn't, like, make a fuss about it. But I think, like, he's a smart guy. Like, he's not going to sign just a one-year deal somewhere. He also, know? I feel like, has more to prove than some people who have longer-term deals. Ooh, here's a question. Baker Mayfield. Does he stay in Tampa? I think so. I think they're going to pay him. We talked to him on Radio Row, too, which was... Does he want to stay there? Yeah. Yes. He he loves Mike Evans. Yeah. And he wants them to keep Mike, too. And I did see a rumor that, like, that, like with their cap and, like, everything that they got, like, they could pay him, like, $70 million. Seventy-five million dollars, which I'm sure he would take in a heartbeat. Yeah, he would do like a three-year deal. Yeah, you know, like perfect. I think it would put him at like thirty years old, thirty-one years old, like perfect. Yeah. So I, th- I genuinely think that with the run that they did, getting to the freaking divisional round of the playoffs, nobody thought that was going to happen. I say sign him. He obviously fits that lifestyle. Yeah. No, it's it's the Tampa effect. We saw I, it with Tom. I saw a side by side of it was like Baker in Cleveland and Baker in Tampa. And like it was like Baker in Cleveland. He's like pale. He's wearing like a trench coat. All he has is like a mustache and he looks like he hasn't slept in days. And then they cut to like Baker in Tampa and he's like super tan and like a little bit buff. And like he's got like a backwards hat on. And I'm like, damn, you just moved to Florida and just like get hot. <laughs> no, that's why I keep saying if I want to move somewhere, like I don't actually want it to be Florida, but I do low key like Florida. I I mean, to be tan all year round. And dream. I am a sunshine girly. Brian was so worried for me yesterday because it was freezing, but sunny. And I'm out on my balcony, just like. Yeah. And he's like, you're going to get frostbite. Like, yeah. and I'm like, but I need to be outdoors. Like I am, I need to be outside. Not that like I need to be doing activities, but I just need to sit outside. Getting sun is good for you like you need vitamin d and it's you know like once you see the difference between you in the summer and you in the winter like that's where that seasonal depression comes in you know like you're not getting that vitamin d i literally look at myself in the winter in the summer i look at myself in the mirror and i'm like i don't need makeup i feel great like confident 
good. I look at myself in the winter and I'm like, I am an abomination. No, like, really? like, oh, that. oh my like, God. I don't recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. I literally feel the same. I love like being in the summertime, just like, even if you're just like going out, just putting like a little bit of mascara and then like, yes! maybe, like some like highlighter or something. And you're just like, I'm flawless. I don't need anything on my face right now. No, literally. The best feeling. If I last, especially for like baseball games and everything, I was oh. showing up with nothing. And I was like, again, just feeling great. I was like, I'm hot. I'm capable. Now I'm like withering away. Oh my God. I hate the winter. Although I did walk outside today to my car. It was about 545 and the sun was not down yet. Yes. And I was well, like, it is my drives home. The sun is setting later. And like, there was a point where by the time I was leaving the office, it was pitch black. Yeah. I was like, I feel like I'm in a coffin. No, it's, and that's why I feel so bad for my brother in the wintertime because my brother works at an Amazon warehouse with no windows and he literally gets in in the morning when it's still dark outside and leaves when it's dark outside. So like in the wintertime, he like doesn't see the sun until the weekend. Like oh, he literally hibernates. Yeah. And he's like, and like I had to explain to him, I was just like seasonal depression. That is, that is what's happening. And he's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yes. He's like, I don't see the sun until oh, Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe in the middle of the day, he might, like, go into the break room, which might have, like, a window. But, like, like I'm like, you you poor boy. I what? sit next to, like, our, 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 like, porch little balcony thing. The door is right here. So, like, during the day, I'm just getting direct sunlight all day. And, like, I'm like, I can't even imagine sitting in the dark all day i mean i also am in the dark all day i don't know how you do well, that well my break room like when i go out for lunch and everything and if i'm leaving my office but like my office didn't even exist a couple years ago like it was an extension of the break room and they just threw up a couple extra walls and closed it off we are literally in the center of the entire building oh i see so there's but, no no windows no windows <sighs> That's so not good for you. No. And it's also freezing because we're right next to production. And if it gets too hot, then all our vinyl peels. And obviously that can't happen. Um, so not only is it dark, but it's also ice cold. And we have no outlets. So Brian got me a, a personal heater that I can only use every once oh, in a while. That's that so awesome. cute. Right? I was like, so, because he's so sick of hearing me complain every day about how cold I am. There are some days I don't take my jacket off. That's not good. Right? I hate that. Right? And I've been like sick all winter and I'm like, I wonder why. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because I'm like, freezing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I can't even imagine not seeing the sun all day. But in summer's the, coming. Summer Spring is summer. coming. In the summer last year at works, I started there at May. In May, we have like picnic tables outside. So I would literally take my computer and go sit outside and work out there. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to sitting out on our like little balcony in the summertime. So and just like doing my because it's literally right here. It's like not like I'm gonna lose Wi-Fi. So it's like I'll just sit outside and like oh my god, you're gonna love it. When I was remote, or at least more remote, um, I always sat outside on my balcony, and it really is the greatest feeling ever. It's a game changer. It game is. Changer. And we have one more topic, the one that I remembered. I was going to say, do you remember the last topic? I'm not going to forget that one. Of course you do. It's time for another segment of Book Talk. Book talk. And while um, I didn't, I haven't finished the book yet, but we okay. decided that we're probably going to do this weekly because yes. I'm flying through it. Yes. Flying you through really, this book. really are. Uh, so far, I'm I'm at like a 8.9 out of 10 right now. Okay. Because I know more better things are going to happen, so I'm not going to give it a 10 quite yet. But I have to say the story, so I understand that in the first book, and we talked about it last week, it being very um, boring, uh, to put it not lightly. It yeah. was boring. And I understand, though, it was a lot of world building. Like, it's a lot of, like, putting you in, uh, like, 
the location and like everything like that and like you understanding what's going on some of the politics going on so on and so forth this is doing that but we are getting a lot more plot yeah like substance and like even though it's just like why are we doing this random thing you're like oh it's it's like adventurous and it's fun and also resan is is more fun than tamlin i just I think that's why I like it so much. He's not here. I'm in the part of the book where Tamlin is like no longer a part of the story. And that's why I'm like, yes! The little like nice little bantering. Oh, there was like a very... So, okay. This is where I'm at. I'm at chapter 22. I'm um, about 240-ish pages in. Okay. Um, What's going on? So they went to the bone carver and talked to him to talk about um whether or not we're resurrecting Jurian. Jurian? Jurian? Yeah. Jurian. I, I, um, I said Jurian. Right. I, like I was literally like when they started mentioning this, I was like, oh, okay, we're resurrecting the guy, the eyeball guy. Sounds yeah, good. Like, like I'm stoked. So they go to talk to him to find out if it's possible. And then they start talking about the cauldron. And I'm like, I thought the cauldron was, like, a metaphorical thing. I didn't realize there was actually a cauldron. There was actually a cauldron that, like, the world came out of. Almost like the Big Bang. But yeah. for fairies. And <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and, like, oh, and then he sends her to the Weaver. Got it. And Did she meet in there? Did she? She's gone. She, okay. she got out. She got this ring. Okay. Which was Reese's mom's that, ring. That whole thing freaked me out. Oh my god. I was watching it. So like, I was like sitting in bed last night. Michael was also playing um, video games. So like, I was getting like him shooting in the background. My heart yes. was like, duh, 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 duh. I was skipping words. Or paragraphs oh, yeah. even. Like, I was like, I just need to know if she gets out. And I'm like skipping, skipping. And it's like, just picturing this like scary blind woman just going like where are you and i'm like ah! <laughs> so and then the chimney oh, with the, the chimney. hair and oh uh, <sighs> just that thought and just the fact that she was like trying to climb up with her and like she's trying to climb out and like her nails are breaking and she's <clears throat> stuck and i was like oh, i was like this is cr this was probably that was like one of the worst things i've had to read in a while like that was a rough that was a rough read but it was interesting yes nonetheless and she yes. gets this ring and she brings it back um and yeah okay yeah that was the last thing that happened was she gets out and oh and he's um she just found out that ian or ian yeah i don't know i think I, it's i don't I think they say ian i am the high priestess like tried to seduce Reese. I don't know why. I think I read her name completely. I think I Ethane. Oh. But like I don't even think it's spelled that way, but I it's feel like not. just remember you go, it's not. Remember when you first said her name and I was like, who is that? Like I didn't yeah. even realize. I think I said her name so wrong. It's spelled I-A-N-T-H-E. I yeah, know. I did like a thane or something well either way she just she just tried to well not just like a hundred years ago Thera, which now i've discovered is exactly how you say her name Thera. is um like she like went into reese's mind and he showed her how she like was like naked on his bed and she was just like we should procreate and reese was like get the fuck out of my room <laughs> i was like yep yeah. i never got a good feeling from her even in the beginning of the book like it was yeah. very obvious they were like kind of sprinkling it in that she wasn't gonna be a good person per se um but yeah so that's where i'm at and i'm enjoying it <gasps> i he likes hearing all these things and now because every tiktok even if i read like like when i was on silver flames the last one if i saw a book a tiktok that was like about a court of thorns and roses i still scro scrolled so i was like i want no spoilers nothing and now like seeing all the tiktoks of like people going back and like looking at things and like hearing you talk about it's just so fun and i can't wait to dive in deeper with you 
I okay. remember last week too, we were talking about, you were talking about how you picture a certain actor when you think of Reese. Yes. I, I did do like, just like some light research to figure out who I'm picturing. Okay. And I had a couple of ones that, that kind of hit the nail on the head. Okay. Tell me. The first one that I realized was Henry Cavill, who used to play Superman, and he's the Witcher. Um, okay. You, if you haven't seen The Witcher, it's the first season is so good, it's starting to die, but um, the show is very good. Um, and he just gives off, like, major, like, maybe if he was, like, he's pretty big, so I think maybe if he was a little bit slender, that would be one. And then the other one that I saw somebody was like fan casting because apparently they're talking about some sort of show that's supposed mm -hmm. to be coming out. Oh my um, god, I would die. I don't think it's like anywhere near close to being released or even in yeah. production at all. But like people were fan casting and they said Matt Bomber. And like that like hit the nail on the head for me. Matt Bomber was in white collar. He <gasps> is incredibly gay. But like oh, really, was, I didn't know he was gay. He's very gay. I didn't know that, but he does. He is like, Reese. I saw that picture, and I was just like, "Oh, you let his hair grow out a little bit more." I was like, "Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it." And then I saw somebody like fan casted Matt Bomber, and I was like, "Okay, it's not just me who thought this." But I think there was another one. Oh, Sebastian Stan. That was like kind of like a tertiary level. Like he could be one, but not exactly. Okay. He's the soldier. I see this. I remember if, him. Yeah. But if I had to pick one of those three, it would be it would be Matt Bomber. Wow. Yeah. I still I'm stuck on Finnick with black hair. I don't even know if Finnick has blue eyes. No, I think he has brown eyes. Sam. Yeah. Feldman, I think his name is Sam Fieldman. What it's is it? So wrong. Just like the way he talked. Like I hear Reese talk in like his tone, that like arrogance. Yeah, I think he's he's good because that guy, that actor plays um the main guy in Daisy Jones. Yes. That's the same actor. Yes. And he gives off that like kind of like like annoyed all the time and a little bit like flirty all the time and yes. that kind of vibe so but no he doesn't even have blue eyes his hey. hair is blonde or light they make contact lenses and hair dye they do wait like look at this picture okay i'm gonna pull it up okay <laughs> <Kuching. laughs> did you hear that yeah. that's so funny all right here we go Okay. That's me taking a screenshot. It's uploading. Okay. Like in this picture of Sam Cowell. Oh, yes. Like, that's not Reese if he just dyed his hair and put contacts in. Yes. Yes. And here his hair is very dark. Right? So I, he's well, got. His eyes honestly look light. Yeah. Here they do. Someone must have, like, kind of edited them a little yeah. bit. But, like, I think it's the shit eating grin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yes. It's like that like smirky grin that like is like, oh, I know you hate me, but also you kind of like me a little bit. And like, yeah, I could see it a hundred percent. Right. That's like really, and that's who I pictured, or that's who I pictured reading the entire time. And I'm gonna be honest, very good follow-up book because it's fantastic. However, I still think about a court, a court of Thorns and Roses every second of every day. Like that yes. is never going to leave me. I'm loving this. Um, I'm just about halfway. Mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal and still fantasy, but like a standalone Ooh. fantasy. Ooh, okay. It's I about, actually, oh, go ahead. It's about Addie LaRue who, and this is giving not, this is the plot. This is no spoilers. She essentially gives her soul away to the devil or to a devil in darkness. And he makes her immortal, but everyone forgets her the second they, like, so the second, like if she was in here and I went and shut the door and went back out, I wouldn't remember who she was. So like, she can't live anywhere. She can't have any friends, like, but she's immortal. That seems 
pretty horrible. Right? It's so sad. Yeah. I, that's, I actually, so I was in Barnes & Noble this weekend. As you know, I was sending you texts. And um, I bought four and five of this series. And Kat told me that she has that book, that physical book. And she's like, if you want to read that, if Jordan recommends it when you're done, she has it for me I tomorrow. very much recommend this. And it's it feels like the same flow. Like it starts off a lot of world world building, a lot of context, but about like 140 pages in, and then it's picking up. And now yeah. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. But I'm on a roll. I want to finish this this weekend, um, because then I'll have read five books this Yay. year. And it's not even March. Oh, this is my third. And those are huge. So that they're technically two and one. Yeah. That this will be my third. And then by the time I'm finished, at least with the novella, I'll be at five. Yeah. And then I have so many books that I got for Christmas that I haven't read. Um or will I don't know when I'm gonna read them. I don't no. know when I'm gonna read but them. But the good news is, oh, my bookshelf over here is more to be read than books that have been read. So good news for you guys listening. Book Talk is here to stay. If you like this episode, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Make sure to check us out on all of our social medias at the unsolicited underscore podcast for TikTok, Instagram, and threads. Find us on Twitter at Sam and Jordan. If you like to listen to us on audio, we are available wherever you get your podcasts. And we will be back next week. Yay! Bye, Bye everybody! <laughs>